Welcome back guys. Today we are going to take a look at 2017 comedy thriller film called Tragedy Girls. The first scene takes off on a secluded, isolated bridge in the middle of nowhere. A couple can be seen making out in the car when suddenly the girl senses someone outside. She urges her boyfriend to take a look. The scaredy guy, named Crag, instantly jumps out where he abruptly gets brutally struck in the face with a machete. His girlfriend runs away screaming with the killer on her tail. She dashes through the woods until she lures the killer to a tripwire and falls on the ground. The protagonists walk out and cheer upon his capture. Ultimately, they knock him unconscious with a taser. The next scene takes place in a stranded warehouse where the teenage girls mock the killer and check his ID to identify him as Laurel. As he's tied to the chair, the girls make jokes about how he's fulfilling their ambitions in accordance with the killings. They show him their Twitter page and state how they're going to have so much fun together. During their speech, Craig starts to groan and his girlfriend named Sadie shusses him and blocks his airways until he dies. Her friend, Michaela, enjoys the scene while the innocent kid expires. Afterwards, they put Laurel in the back and trap him in a small room. Later, the girls return home. The following morning, they spread the word all around the school about Craig and how he mysteriously disappeared. Furthermore, they try their best to gain more followers for their Twitter page, at Tragedy Girls. In their classroom, the teacher named Mrs. Kent invites the sheriff over and he gives a brief speech to the students about staying calm upon the murder. His own son, Jordan, interferes, but he shuts him down and leaves the class. Later, the girls record another clip in regards to Craig's missing while speculating the indifference among the students. In the meantime, they grab Jordan to edit their special video for their page. During that, Sadie admirably stares into Jordan's eyes while Michaela takes her away exasperately. That evening, they discuss the killing spree plans in the cafe. Michaela states that everything will work out while Sadie goes melancholy, but an idea pops up in Michaela's mind to gain 100,000 followers before prom and then frame Laurel for every act. Afterwards, they practice cheerleading where the lead girl named Syl roasts Michaela for her shoes. The girls leave the practice and observe their useless Twitter page. In the meantime, their eyes fall upon Michaela's ex-boyfriend, Toby, who has tons of followers. The girls walk up to him, and Michaela gets all squeamish at first, and they listen to his philosophical views for a moment, but Sadie's mind goes to the evil side. They proceed to plan his death by causing an accident with his newly bought motorcycle. In the interim, Laurel struggles to break free, while the girls offer him canned dog food. Afterwards, they dress him up in costumes and plan Toby's fate. As the night falls in, Toby drives on the highway to achieve serenity when Michaela starts to stalk him in the car. She starts driving crazily and Toby speeds up. The action only escalates as Michaela urges him to go faster and faster. On the other hand, Sadie lays some spikes on the road which cause Toby to swerve and drop down the roadside. Sadie records his fall and as they both enjoy the clip, they hear Toby's groans. The girls walk up to find him brutally deformed and twisted. They sigh in desperation and Michaela stabs him to death. On the other hand, a driver stops to inquire for any assistance but Sadie covers up the whole situation. Meanwhile, Toby speaks out his philosophy one last time, which makes Michaela drool over him and kiss him passionately. The following morning, they prepare to give an interview to the news for their own popularity but they get rejected. Afterwards, they discuss the probabilities to fame by making the headline of Rosedale Murder Cover-Up with Jordan, who states that his father is stopping him from working with them. Nevertheless, he stays on their side and requests Sadie to be safe, but Michaela drives her away. The scene now shifts to the prom committee, where Syl gives the opinion to cancel the dance in order to honor the deceased classmates, but the tragedy girls vehemently oppose it and order the continuation of the dance. After ending the conference, they proceed to the hall and find Syl's wooden library model in the showcase, which is the source of her scholarship. The Eva girls decide to end her career and they trash the whole thing up. Later, Syl arrives to witness the horror and she orders her nerdy friend to help her. Later that night, as she works in the workshop, Syl senses someone else in the area as well. The lights turn off and she finds her way in the dark to flip various switches that turn up the saws as well as the lights. Suddenly, she comes face to face with two masked persons who are actually the tragedy girls. They surround Syl, but she identifies Michaela by her shoes. Nevertheless, they fight each other, but Syl accidentally gets hauled upside down and her face gets cut into two by the ruthless wood saw. The girls then decide to cut her up, and during their proceedings, the janitor comes in as well, but the lame guy doesn't even look up. The girls successfully inflict another murder, which now makes them extremely popular in school as they highlight the facts. Walking down the hall proudly, they triumph in victory. Even the news reporter now approaches them. In the interim, Jordan walks up to Michaela and notices her bloody sneakers, but she covers it up. Ignoring that, he advises them to stay low-key, but Michaela ignores his request. Just then, they get an order from the principal's office, where the sheriff states that they are jeopardizing the investigation. The principal becomes the girls' team, but the sheriff stays adamant upon keeping them away from the matter. 
Afterwards, they hold a memorial for Syl in the gymnasium, where after their speech, another big guy named Big Al gets up on stage and gains all the popularity by speaking for revenge against the killer. He even asks for volunteering, which brings him ultimate praise. The girls get jealous of his popularity and decide to put an end to him. In their shed, Sadie orders Michaela to do the task and leaves. Behind her back, Laurel starts talking to Michaela and tries to turn her against Sadie. His attempt fails at the end, but he still stays consistent upon the fact that Sadie will betray her at the end, as she only thinks of her own self. Ignoring his deceptions, Michaela and Sadie proceed to stalk Big Al coming out of Mrs. Kent's home. On the other hand, Jordan goes to his father's office and tries to convince him to take a look at Sadie's research, but his dad refuses to hear it. Just then, he gets called away and behind his back, Jordan logs into the computer and steals the confidential files in a USB. Meanwhile, the movie flips to the gym where Big Al pushes the bench press. His trainer pumps him up and leaves the gym while Michaela gets into action. She walks in to flirt with the big guy, but he doesn't even give a notice. Suddenly, she spills his water bottle and takes it away but silently mixes the poison in it. Back outside, Sadie gets a text from Jordan that he's coming over in 20 minutes. Back in the gym, Michaela uses her charm to get Big Al to drink the water, but he senses something in the back. As he goes away to check it, Michaela notices Sadie on the side beckoning her to leave at once. But Big Al comes back and Sadie attacks him with an iron rod. The guy doesn't even flinch and he attacks back. The fight turns vicious as he throws Michaela in the mirrors and proceeds to strangle Sadie to death, but gets stabbed in the chest and knocked away by Michaela using a dumbbell. As he falls on the bench, Sadie drops the weight bar on his head, causing his brains to burst out. After killing him, the girls go on their way. In order to meet Jordan, Sadie runs home and Jordan arrives just then in his trashy car. He walks inside and gives the USB to Sadie, stating it has all the confidential reports from the crime scenes. Sadie admires his efforts, but avoids his kiss. The following day, the news of Big Al's murder spreads around the town and the school gets cancelled. As the situation turns grave, Michaela enjoys breakfast with her family. Later, everyone goes to the town hall where the sheriff gives a speech to the residents and requests them to stay calm. Jordan also arrives and sits behind Sadie and Michaela. Suddenly, he notices Michaela using her phone and in the next instant, everyone gets an image of Big Al's busted head. The clamor starts and it turns into a protest along with the slogan, Remember Al. The mayor takes the charge and the townspeople proceed to have a march. On the other hand, Laurel gets free from his captivity and escapes to wreak havoc in the city. The scene then shifts to the march where people suddenly get back in horror as they witness their mayor impaled on an electric pole. The girls watch in terror as they realize Laurel has escaped and he's now coming for their lives. The next morning, they give an interview to the press, but just as they leave, Sadie receives a text image of themselves and realizes that Laura was here. As they feel the danger looming on them, the girls show up to the sheriff's office and state the perspective of the killer's appearance. They give all the details and the sheriff manages to sketch out a raggedy form of Laurel. The scene now shifts into the class where Tragedy Girls receives hundreds of likes and followers. Mrs. Kent orders them to leave the phones and starts scolding them for negative traits upon which the girls leave the class. Afterwards, Jordan pulls away from them as well and Michaela starts to trash talk about his family. With that done, Michaela gets up to leave, but Jordan manages to steal her phone. Later, Michaela decides to kill him. Sadie goes against it, remarking that he's harmless, but Michaela convinces her to put an end to him for good. Meanwhile, Jordan eats dinner with his father, and he later goes into a deep sleep. Jordan gets a text from Sadie, stating she's outside his door. Jordan takes her up to the room while Michaela listens to them through the microphone. Sadie sits on his bed and grips onto the dagger, but Jordan suddenly blurts out all of his suspicions about Michaela. He brings out her phone and tells Sadie everything in secrecy. Meanwhile, Michaela boils in anger. Back inside, as Jordan speaks about all the red flags, Sadie kisses him passionately. Michaela groans in disgust, but suddenly notices Laurel making his way to the bedroom. The couple notices it as well, and Jordan opens the door to get himself stabbed in the arm with the machete. Laurel proceeds to attack Sadie, who plunges the dagger in his foot. Nevertheless, their fight escalates and she runs outside. Meanwhile, Michaela breaks the window to bring the sheriff out of his sleep and shoots at Laurel. The murderer escapes from the window while the sheriff walks up to his injured son. Sadie walks in as well and the sheriff thanks her. The following morning, he gives an award for bravery and courage to Sadie Cunningham. She alone stands at the podium and proudly talks about her own efforts while Michaela stands in the crowd, burning in jealousy as her best friend was getting all of the appraisal for her efforts. Later, she walks in the gym to talk to Sadie, but they indulge in a heated argument and Sadie asks her to leave as once as she doesn't need Michaela now. Abhorred and dismayed, Michaela walks away in anger. The patterns have now changed as Sadie moves up in her class, establishes the good relations, and stays away from all the evil. Meanwhile, Michaela is now all alone and purging with hatred. 
Time passes on and it's prom day. Jordan walks to Sadie's house and picks her up in his trashy car. On the other hand, Michaela gets dolled up as well and her parents admire her in every way. The prom starts and Sadie dances with Jordan in an extremely uncomfortable way. After pretending for a while, she leaves him and proceeds to have a drink where Mrs. Kent meets her and admires her change. Furthermore, she awards her by giving her the news that she'll be suggesting her name for the scholarship. Sadie thanks her in admiration and proceeds to sit with Jordan who starts apologizing to her for any uncomfortable encounters. Just then, the principal gets up on stage and gives a few useless words for the students. Afterwards, the nerd comes forward and announces Jordan and Sadie the prom king and queen. Jordan gets up in joyful astonishment and dances with Sadie, who remains silent. In the meantime, Mrs. Kent walks outside to smoke a cigarette when suddenly Michaela comes her way. Behind her, it's Laurel who swings the machete. Mrs. Kent runs away in terror, but Michaela stabs her from behind. She turns around in agony and Michaela mercilessly slits her throat. On the other side, Sadie notices Michaela amidst the crowd and follows her through the entire school to a secluded place where she finds her wearing a pink mask. Jordan also follows Sadie and overhears the conversation where Michaela depicts that it was Sadie's plan to kill Jordan's mother. Furthermore, she threatens Sadie and Laurel also walks up to her. They both surround Sadie as if to kill her and just then, Jordan drops the massive wooden boards on him and escapes with Sadie. But upon climbing the stairs, they get trapped. Laurel also follows them, but instead of attacking them, he turns to Michaela, who eventually kills him with a pistol. As the danger recedes, Jordan confronts Michaela about the killing and Sadie lures him aside to give him a kiss. Amidst the cloud of romance, she puts the nook around his neck and hangs him with the rope, which eventually murders him. Sadie then puts up a green mask on her face and the tragedy girls walk to the prom hall and light up the whole gymnasium on fire. As the carnage occurs, the fire services arrive and the sheriff watches the whole facility burn down along with his son. Meanwhile, the girls enjoy their menacing moment while their 124 fellows burn to death. In the final moments of the film, we see the tragedy girls extremely happy with their life. They bid farewell to their families and travel together for college. And with that, the movie concludes. Thanks for watching, guys.